What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. In this series, I show you how easy it is to manipulate and lie with data. I don't know about you, but if you've watched this entire series on how to lie and manipulate with data, it really makes you trust almost nothing. And I think that's a good thing. I don't think we should trust anybody or anything that is online, but that's just a side note. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create biased surveys to make your data look really good. All right, so let's take a look at some survey data. Now, I am always very wary of survey data, and I'll tell you why. It's because surveys are so easy to manipulate, it's not even funny. And I'll give you an example back before I was even a data analyst. This was back when I was in college. I was in a rec therapy program and we had to conduct surveys for one of our classes. And so what we were initially conducting a survey on was if people liked going to the gym. And naturally, we went to the gym to ask people. And when we got our results back, our numbers were extremely high. People love going to the gym. I mean, it was like 95% of people liked going to the gym and we're like, whoa, people really like going to the gym until we started thinking about it. And we we're like, wait a second, uh, this probably isn't very representative of the population on campus as a whole because not everybody actually goes to the gym. Maybe we should go to a more neutral place, like maybe the dining hall where we would just get a myriad of people, just random people, and then we could conduct that data. And then we found that it was only like 30% of people liked going to the gym. And really quickly, let's take a look at this survey that was conducted. We have a social media survey number and we have a like, dislike, and they were just neutral. Now you can just immediately tell by this survey that people really liked whatever this survey was about. They loved it. Out of the thousand people who responded, 900 of them liked it only 50 people disliked or were neutral about that post. This is something that they're gonna post everywhere. This company's gonna be like, look how much people absolutely love whatever we were talking about. But as you can imagine, they posted this on their social media where people who already like them are going to follow them. So now they kind of have this echo chamber of, we really like what this is and what you're doing. And so of course, naturally you're gonna have a lot less dislikes, a lot less neutral. But let's go over here to a, the bias survey good. This is where we do kind of a more representative or larger scale survey. And this is gonna be for all users. This isn't just people who follow their social media. This is everybody who uses their device, their platform or their app or whatever it is. Now, if you ask a larger population, people who don't follow them on social media, there's still a good amount of likes. There's still 2000 likes for this poll, but you'll notice that the dislikes and the neutrals were a lot higher. We have a thousand for each. Now this is still good for this survey. This is still a good thing, but this is most likely more representative as a whole than just asking their social media. But you could very easily take this and run with it and say, people love this. People are overjoyed with this change that we made or this new product or whatever it is, but that may only be true for your core users. This may not actually be a good thing for maybe your outside users, for people who are interested in the product, who might be looking to buy your product. And so there are different surveys that you need to conduct for different uses. Maybe there's a change that you're making for current customers who follow you on social media. This is gonna be a great survey, very representative of your exact population that you're trying to get polls from. But if that's what you're trying to do, and then you ask everybody, then these responses are gonna be skewed as well. So knowing your target audience, knowing who you should be asking, who you shouldn't be asking or including in these surveys is very important. Again, I've made this mistake myself, and in fact, most of the mistakes that we've talked about in this series, I've made myself. And so I'm not above these things. I'm just learning from experience and sharing it with you. So I hope that you learn from this. Don't be that guy or girl who does this and then messes things up and you look like a fool in that next presentation. I want you to look good. So if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.